Hey folks, Ryan Rose here. Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to be riding Apache. Uh, this is Emily's horse. And she's been working for us doing chores and things like that. And he is her first horse. And so when it's her first horse, she's been learning how to use her hands better. And um, she kind of just recently started taking lessons with me. But before that, she had a really bad habit of controlling his speed with her hands. And I know none of you have ever done that on a horse, but maybe you know somebody that has accidentally done that. And I tell you what, if I could sprinkle some magic fairy dust on all people riding horses, it would be to help people not use their reins for speed control. Um, use your reins to set up flexion, uh, vertical flexion, lateral flexion. The more you control your speed with your reins, what you're actually doing is teaching the horse, reins mean go faster, push through, the, excuse me, push through the bit to get relief. And so that's what we don't wanna do. I always tell people 50% of horse training is teaching a horse what you want them to know, and the other 50%, half of it, is not teaching them things you don't want them to know. And so unfortunately, he's learned to push through the bit, and he kind of runs around with his head up and back hollow. And so I'm gonna help him understand that, and I'm gonna put him on what I call back to zero. It's like, how would he ride if he didn't know how to push through the bit? I'm gonna reset him, and then we're gonna bring Emily back into it, riding him, and I'm gonna show her how to use her, her reins better, how to use her body position. Um, better. So let me just break down um, a couple habits that people tend to have. So if I'm pulling back on the reins, the horse starts to get defensive because their mouth is a very sensitive area. And then if I'm not isolating my arms and my hands from the rest of my body and I'm riding inconsistently like this, and I'm, I'm coming forward and, and picking up contact, and it's, it's actually kind of hard for me to do, but if I'm, if I'm kind of flopping around up here, my hands are super inconsistent for him and he's gonna go, what in the world are you trying to do up there? And he's gonna get defensive and he's gonna push his nose out. So if you're gonna ride your horse with contact, in a bit especially, you need to be aware that you need to have a strong core, you need to have good posture and your hands need to be reliable. Your hands need to be reliable for your horse. Um, it's an expectation I have of people riding with a bit and riding with contact. Now, if you want to put them on a loose rein and you want to steer off your legs and maybe with a stick or whatever you want to do, no big deal. But if you're riding around with contact, then you have a lot of responsibility that you may or may not be aware of. Okay? So one of the first things I'm going to look at for helping him get back to neutral, back to zero, is I'm going to ask him to get soft and trust my hand on one rein. Now, because he's already learned to push through the bit, if he pulls on me, I'm not gonna pull back. I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna be a post. And so he's gonna learn some boundaries to fall in under. Now, if he tries to push through my hands, I'm gonna squeeze with my spurs. And what this does is it accesses a different part of his body and it says, if you're leaning here, pressure comes on down here. So the idea is this is different. He's been used to being pulled on for a long time, so I'm not gonna try to pull on him better than the next person. So we're gonna get control here one rein at a time. So I'm gonna ask him to just get soft. So you can see him, his lateral flexion coming through. I mean, ooh, there we go, he even had a little bit of vertical. I'm using my inside leg to widen out and keep him on the circle so he doesn't turn, because he's thinking that reins mean turn right now, and it means flexion. There, well that was a big give. I think you guys could see that one. Now we'll try it on the other side. Horses can learn and change way faster than you think they can. They learn so quickly if we present it to them in the right way. But this is hard for people because people think like people and horses um, just think in terms of what's comfortable, what's not comfortable. And they're just gathering information from all their circumstances and what are they associating things with. But it's natural for a human to try to just make a horse do what we want them to do. Press and hold. There, he got soft again. And I'm doing this at a trot because that's where he kind of learned the association. Walk is a little bit slow. It doesn't quite have enough energy and enough um, intensity for him to want to make a change. So I'm going to hold right here. There, he got soft again. Good. Okay, so now, now that I got him softer on one rein, and I used my seat there also to stop. So part two of the rider being more reliable is when I want to slow down, I'm going to change my seat. I'm going to rotate my pelvis, get a little deeper in the saddle. That's always the first thing I do. I'm not going to ride and then pull on the mouth to, to stop where they didn't know pressure was coming on. 
if you've ever seen the cartoon where somebody's trying to make their horse go and they won't go, it's typically because they're pulling the horse to stop randomly. And then the horse is saying, how do I know when, it, when it's to stop or not go? So I'm gonna play it safe and just not go forward. Okay, and that's what can tend to happen. So now I'm gonna pick up the reins slowly. Ah, see, when I, when I offer him this feel without pushing in, you can see how quickly he can get soft into my hands. Now I'm squeezing with my spurs there until he really commits to it and gets soft. Then I'll release him. He made a nice change there. That was good. Now, I also believe that back somewhere in this horse's training, he had learned to, to give a soft feel. So this isn't his first time learning it, which helps me. Um, but unfortunately, he did learn to push into pressure. And I think he also associated that pushing into pressure more while walking and trotting, not at a standstill. So that's also why this is a little bit easier. You know, the riders typically aren't pulling on their horses at a standstill. They're pulling on their horses in motion. So you can see how he's getting soft there, but I'm trying to hold and press. So a couple things. Now we're gonna start doing it in motion. I wanna keep my elbows in close to my body, keep my posture upright, shoulders and hips and heels in line together so that I'm controlling my body up here so that my hands can be reliable for him. So now I'm gonna ask him to go and just walk with the soft feel. Now, notice my hands are kind of open and if I, if, he, if I feel him leaning on me, I'll squeeze my fingers. You know, we're up here in Wisconsin, I say it's just like milking a cow. Uh, that's, a real, that's a thing a lot of people know about up here. Um, if you're not from Wisconsin, um, think about wringing out a sponge of water. Maybe you have those. So again, I'm gonna squeeze my fingers. I'm gonna ask him to get soft. Very nice, I like that. Wow, so this is coming along very nicely. Again, if he goes to lean on me, I'm gonna squeeze with my spurs. But you can, again, you can see how quickly he made a change there um, as the rider offered him the softness first because I'm not giving him any reason to brace into me. I'm taking it slow. I'm riding him off my legs. Squeeze my fingers here. Notice my hands are separate from my seat. Even if I start posting here, my hands are consistent for his mouth. I'm not dropping the contact and picking it back up. I'm asking him to give. Now, I also recognize that this is a sensitive subject for a lot of people. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but there's a lot of people that think, well, because he said pick up contact, then that means he's, he thinks that that horse is now through his back and he's using his hindquarters. And I'm not saying that. He's not collected yet. He's just giving his chin and pull to me. That's it, that's where we're at. It's gonna take a lot more to build in collection and engagement. So just because I have what I call a soft feel doesn't mean I have the whole package yet. This is just starting to have a little clear communication. Graduation day for the rider to learn how to have a soft feel and present it to the horse in the right way and to get away from steering their horse with the reins and controlling their speed with the reins. So, so we've talked about the speed control. So if he, if he wants to go faster than I want to go, I need to either ride him faster. Again, so if he wants to go faster, I could ride faster or I could turn sharper. See, if I make it a smaller circle, it's harder for him to go so fast. So you don't need to pull back on both reins for speed control. Use your pattern and use one rein, okay? Now, watch this. I wanna go wider, so watch. My inside leg is gonna come on, position two, and I'm gonna widen out. Very good. Now I'm gonna take my leg off. Whoop. Take my leg off, my hands aren't moving, my outside leg has come on, and I'm asking him to turn and steer off my left leg. So again, my hands are still being consistent. Now, change, put my inside leg back on, ask him to widen out again. Your horse will appreciate if you learn to ride them in this way versus only pulling on their mouth to make a change. So we're gonna get away from that. Then once he gets good at this, of riding with flexion in the gate, then we can start to add contact in transitions. Transitions are a great opportunity to either gain or lose suspension. So we can start adding this into walk trot, trot canter, walk canter, 
stop, halt, those kind of things. Even changing directions is a, is a bit of a, uh, very good. Even changing directions is considered a transition to the horse. So any of those transitions are easy opportunities to lose a soft feel. Um, so pay more attention when you're making a transition and uh, go on and give this a try and you're gonna have a lot of success with it. Be reliable for your horse. Work on your own riding and your own skills and um, you'll be amazed at the results you get afterwards. So thanks for watching this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.